And so if you wouldn't mind, maybe pull back the curtain of the history of Lake Elsinore, because it's one of the, the older cities in this local area. You know, sure. everybody thinks of Temecula as the wine country and all that kind of stuff. But Temecula is relatively newer. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Lake Elsinore has a rich history. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, going back 130 years, uh, give us a little flyby history lesson, if you want. It was incor- incorporated in 1888. It was uh, largely seen as a, uh, a place where you could either go ahead and mine something out of the ground or grow something, uh, usually citrus fruits, uh, over uh, some a large number of the years. Uh, when I moved into town in 1987, there was still an orange grove, several orange groves in the area that were um, actively being utilized as producing orange groves. Um, and uh, uh, you know that slowly changed over time. In the 1920s and 30s, you had its heyday. Hollywood, uh, Bela Lugosi used to come out to the area, and some of uh, the other Hollywood elites. Um, would actually come out to the Country Club Heights area where there was um, an actual country club, which is the reason why it's called Country Club Heights, uh, as well as many nice homes, uh, one of the most famous being Amy's Castle, which is literally a Moorish-styled castle uh, built by uh, somebody who was a very prominent religious figure uh, back in the day. Um, the, uh, is, as time progressed, um, at some point the lake dried up in the 60s, and that created some um, economic deterioration. Uh, the city turned it around and, and began want to be one of the first places to go ahead and innovate in motocross uh, racing. So you had dirt bikes. So we took the, 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 the muddy lake and we turned it into a race course. And, um, but that also brought, brought with it some of the biker uh, community that's not so great. Uh, or wasn't so great, and that in turn brought um, uh, issues with violence, drugs, uh, gang activity, mm-hmm. racketeering, things of that nature, that ran the city down through the late part of the '80s and early uh, a late part of the '70s and early part of the '80s. Um, once you got into the '90s, you started seeing some um, uh, national and statewide trends that had pretty much had the politicians fed up. And that's us- that's when about the same time you saw. Uh, Bill Clinton's uh, uh, crime bill got passed, which helped, and uh, as well as the California Street Three Strikes Law, which helped. Um, uh, some would say helped too much. I think it did a great job of cleaning up our community. There were some changes made uh, in the war on, war on crime, which helped our clean up our community. And then in the early part of the 2000s, my predecessors uh, did a really good job of increasing police presence and spending on police uh, uh, safety, public safety. And public safety has been a number one priority for us. We built on those previous successes by, um, A, in entitling our police officers to provide uh, police service. We're a community that appreciates our police as opposed to actively uh, attacks our police as a threat right. to the, the community in some way, shape, or form, um, which I, I don't understand that, you know. Um, but um, uh, the other thing that we've done is we've embedded uh, uh, outreach along with our police. And so when we start talking about homelessness and the increase in homelessness in our area, one of the innovative things that we've done is that not only do we have a zero tolerance policy as far as that goes, uh, we also go ahead and offer and provide assistance and support to go ahead and help get people off the street when they're willing to do so, when they're willing to go ahead and take a hand up, uh, not a hand out, right? That's the idea and philosophy and mentality. We, we spend a lot of time educating the public about that because when you're giving a donation to somebody who's sitting on a, a freeway overpass, what you're doing is you're creating an incentive for those individuals to continue doing that. And as sad as that may seem, uh, there are resources available for them to help. They would just prefer to do it and get it in the easy way, right? Um, uh, not to say that being homeless is easy or being transient is easy, but uh, the bottom line is is that uh, uh, th- those folks have a way to get food. They have a way to get shelter. They just don't want to give up some of the other elements of their life in order to go ahead and get in into that program. So um, you know, w- w- it's a process. We've been we've been through a lot. 